Oh, I'm gonna be so excited. I'm excited. It's gonna be fucking great, dude. We're gonna have so much fun there. Every week, this is what it takes to go to the car. We got a 94 Toyota Supra, started out as an NA. So we're gonna be jumping it into a 2JZ GT. The price of a Mark IV Toyota Supra can vary anywhere from $30,000 to well over $100,000 for some very special examples. Here are all of the things that can affect a Supra's value, part one. There are many things that you can notice about a Mark IV Supra right away without even having to look inside or under the hood. The easiest place to start would be if the car is right-hand drive or left-hand drive. While right-hand drive is definitely cool, left-hand drive is actually more valuable as only about 25% of all Supras were ever made in left-hand drive. Another thing that you can easily check is if the Supra has a hardtop or has the factory aero top. Hard tops are very rare on left-hand drive Supras and aero tops are very rare on right-hand drive Supras. Both of these variants help make some Supras more desirable. And lastly for part one, if the exterior of the car is either completely bone stock or tastefully modified, it will have a much higher value than a Supra that's been heavily modified on the exterior. So long story, we've been uh, looking for one for about 15 years, trying to figure out the market and everything like that. Uh, ended up finding one on a Supra page out in Rhode Island. So the dude wanted 30,000 for the rolling chassis. I told him that I wanted the R154 transmission there with the motor so we could drive it back. Um, ended up getting it for 49.5. So knowing the shop and knowing what everything happens here, um, I wanted Rick and the guys to build me a badass Supra, right? I wanted something that I could take to the track, that we could take to shows, and just something that really caught your eye as it's driving down the street. So new motor, suspension work, you know, some design ideas, just pretty much everything that this shop's looking for. We'll throw into this car and make it special. Well, I'm really hoping, uh, I love Laguna Seca. Uh, that track is just a driver's track, so I really want to take the car down there and see how it performs. And that's number one on the list when we do a couple shows like that. Um, try to get in and fit in where you know that car is most seen and, and done the most good for you know, the shop and the car. I've always wanted a Supra. My first car was my grandma's 1998, I'm sorry, 1988 Toyota Supra. And it was badass. Uh, I got that as my first car, blew the motor in it two times, and uh, you know, ended up getting rid of it, which I totally regret. But uh, right after that, I always knew I wanted another Supra. And so just been looking forever. Excited. This show is, you know, prestigious all around the world, and you know, going with these guys in this shop for Custom F Customs, you know, I just know it's going to be an awesome show, and I'm really excited to take the super there and see what these guys can build, and you know, just really portray everything about it. Sexy lines, everything. Seems it's going to be badass in Vegas. Can't and so, it's super exciting, right? So, always an adventure with us, it never fails. Uh, we leave California all the way out to Rhode Island. We get there the night before get set up, go have some awesome steak and lobster on this little place that overlook one of the bays. I get to see the car in the morning, show up, gorgeous car, super stoked. Have some breakfast while dude's tuning it up, gets it all squared away. Uh, I think we're about to get ready on the road by like 10.30, 9, uh, yeah, 9.30, 10. Uh, we got 4,000 miles to drive back to California. Got four days to do it in because I got to be back at work. Uh, so we take off and all of a sudden the power steering line bursts. So luckily we were just down the street from the shop. We take it back. Dude gets everything all squared away, and now we got four days to make it 4,000 miles. A uh, little backstory on that, the car hasn't been driven in about 10 years. The dude finally got everything squared away, and we had maybe a week with it, or uh, the shop had a week with it to test drive it a little bit to get it ready for the road to make it all the way to California. So we take off about 10 o'clock, everything's doing fine. We make it, I think, three or four states in maybe two days, and then uh, we hit Nebraska. And right there, all of a sudden, in the middle of nowhere on 80, car overheats, pull over on the side of the road, off the freeway, nothing there. No utilities, no phones, no charger in the car, so our cell phones are like 1%. Class. And so uh, pull over, we're thinking it's this and this and this. We're thinking it's the thermostat. So I'm out there, I'm hitchhiking on the side of the freeway. We got about two hours to make it to an O'Reilly. Um, nowhere, right? So a car full of Hispanic individuals, which was awesome five people in the car right just packed in so they they're like hey hop in hop in so i hop in the car we drive about an hour into town back into lincoln they drop me off at o'reilly 
and they're like, okay, cool, thanks. And I'm like, no, wait, time out. I need a ride back. Um, it's this nice lady, her brother, and three young kids in the back of the car. I told them I'd pay them 100 bucks if they'd wait for me to get some parts and drive them back. They uh, talk it over and they say yes. So I get my parts thinking that that's, we're all good, hop back in the car. They have to go all the way down into downtown Lincoln now to drop the little kids off because it was about 8 o'clock at night. We roll up in downtown Lincoln and uh, hop out of this car, white kid, probably a, um, a neighborhood I probably you know didn't belong in. Didn't fit in, first of all, totally, of course, right? Parents are sitting outside, funniest look on their face, wondering, hey, what are you doing here in this car? Uh, talk to them, super nice folks, explain the situation. They were nice enough to drive me all the way back to the car. Uh, now it's probably 11 o'clock, we got headlamps, trying to figure out what's up with the car, change out the thermostat, fire it all up, throw some coolant in, seems good. Give it about two minutes, car seems right. Hop back on the freeway, heading down the freeway, bam, overheats again. Now we're on the side of the freeway on 80. Wrong license plate in the car because the dude was cool enough to hook us up with the plate to get us where we needed to go because the car hadn't been registered in 10 years. So a little sketched out on that now that we're off the side of the freeway. Phones are both at 1%, no charging opportunities. Call home, try to get some AAA going, no luck there. All of a sudden, the car pulls up behind us, famous the cops. He's running our plates, he hops out, says, hey, what's going on here? Your car doesn't match your plates, come out of the car. Give us a quick search, a quick pat down. I run them through the whole story. Hey, I just bought this. We're trying to make it back to California. We got two more days to do it, blah, 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 blah. And he's like, all right, I get it. No big deal. It takes the plates, leaves us on the side of the road. Just says, good luck, guys. I'm not calling you a tow truck. Keep, you know, keep up with the hustle. So anyway, I call home. I was able to get uh, home base to call a tow truck, but right before my phone dies. It's about 8 a.m. in the morning. This Joe Dirt looking dude shows up loads up the car super cool takes us into lincoln to some bougie toyota shop uh we were able to take a bird bath there the dudes were super cool we got some food we got some water and a quick nap and the guys were super 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 cool trying to hook up the uh, the repair for the car so it turns out that we blew two little small holes in the radiator but it was an aftermarket radiator they couldn't get any parts in or any other radiators for like two weeks that wasn't going to work. We're trying to figure out if we need to fly home or what we're going to do. So they find this old dude that has like this race car shop, but I think it was like a Sunday, so he was at home. Call him at home, talk to the dude, explain the situation. Dude hooks us up for 200 bucks, comes in on his off day, welds up the radiator with some plastic deal that's supposed to be lifetime. And we end up getting back on the road by four o'clock, uh, missed like a whole day of driving, but the car's good. We're back on the road and ended up making it all the way home, nonstop driving for another, I think it was like 1,200 to 1,500 miles and rolling just exhausted. But uh, you know, after all that, car breaks down, hitchhiking on the side of the road, a whole day lost that Toyota, a uh, custom fix for the radiator, slide into town, everything's great. The car performed awesomely and uh, you know, we got it back here. And then of course had it for two weeks and then straight to the race car shop for full upgrades. So that's kind of where we sit now after the long story on the backstory of the car. Uh, you know, what an awesome adventure. Me and my best friend Travis, he was with me the whole way. Couldn't have done it without him. And then now it's uh, it's in the race car hands that the race car got. So here we are, Custom Ever Customs, just getting ready for a super upgrade on the car and get ready for season. Cause